Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Let's get the reasons for why your car's temperature gauge is going haywire overheating one minute, then magically going back to normal the next. I've also discussed diagnosis steps for each cause, so you can easily spot the issue without breaking the bank. From stuck thermostats to air pockets in the cooling system, clogged radiators to faulty water pumps, I'll explain the underlying causes that make your engine temperature fluctuate. If your engine is overheated, first crank up the heater to draw heat away from the engine. Next. Find a safe place to pull over and turn off the engine to diagnose each cause. Number one, stuck thermostat. The thermostat is essentially a valve that opens and closes to regulate the flow of coolant through your engine and maintain the optimal operating temperature. When the thermostat fails, it can either stick in the open or closed position, causing your engine to run too cool or overheat. The thermostat is located along the upper hose of radiator. When you just start the engine and the thermostat is stuck open, the coolant also flows through the radiator. As a result, engine's temperature does not reach a desired level. When thermostat is stuck closed, the coolant can't pass through the radiator to exchange heat. The same hot coolant repeatedly passes through the engine which causes overheating. Thermostats can stick due to corrosive coolant or buildup of particulates which jam its spring mechanism. Moreover, if there are minor leaks through thermostat housing, it could cause engine to overheat and then goes back to normal. Now, if the thermostat is partially opened or closed, it will cause intermittent overheating problem in your engine. To diagnose a stuck thermostat, put the hands on the upper radiator hose as hot coolant from engine flows through it. If the thermostat is stuck open, the radiator hose will quickly get hot. If thermostat is stuck closed, you won't feel any coolant flow through upper radiator hose. You can also test the engine thermostat by putting it in boiling water and observe if the spring moves. If it doesn't move, the thermostat is stuck. Number two, air pockets and cooling system. Air trapped in the coolant lines or radiator can disrupt proper coolant flow, resulting in incorrect temperature readings and potential engine overheating. The water pump in the cooling system may experience cavitation issues due to trapped air. There is a likelihood that occasionally, the pump is unable to circulate the coolant, and then suddenly, when coolant arrives, it resumes pumping. Additionally, the engine coolant temperature sensor measures the coolant temperature to display it on the gauge. However, if air pockets form at certain points, the ECT sensor occasionally fails to accurately measure the coolant temperature. This causes fluctuations in the temperature reading, making the gauge rise and fall erratically. You may also encounter a situation where the gauge indicates a high temperature, but the engine is not overheating. In that case, you need to measure the coolant temperature. If it's under 230 degree Fahrenheit, the cooling system is working fine. To bleed air from the cooling system, first remove the radiator or overflow tank cap when the engine is cold. Start the engine, Turn the heater to hot and let it idle until the coolant circulates. Then loosen the bleed screw or squeeze the radiator hose until coolant flows out without bubbles. Keep topping up the coolant until the level stays stable. Run the engine at higher RPMs for 10 minutes to fully circulate the coolant. Finally, allow it to cool and recheck the coolant level. Number three, low coolant level. When there's not enough coolant circulating through the engine, it can't effectively dissipate heat, leading to temperature spikes. Coolant leaks, whether from a damaged hose, a cracked radiator, a damaged housing of thermostat, or a blown head gasket, can quickly deplete your coolant levels. The water pump is located at the front of the engine. It has a seal around the shaft, which, if worn out, can result in coolant leakage through the weep hole. Moreover, if the water pump's bearing is damaged, it will cause the pump to wobble, damaging the seals and leading to coolant leakage. When coolant leaks through the head gasket, it mixes with the engine oil and burns. In such a case, you'll observe white smoke from the exhaust. If you open the radiator cap, you'll see a brownish, milky texture. Number four, bad water pump. The water pump is mechanically run by the engine via a serpentine belt that also passes over the crankshaft pulley. The impeller of water pump can erode which can lead to reduced or no coolant flow, causing the engine to overheat. The coolant may leak through weep hole if water pump's seal is failing. A seize bearing will prevent the impeller from turning smoothly causing intermittent overheating issues. The engine may overheat rapidly under load or in stop and go traffic if the water pump is damaged. As you increase speed, the higher engine RPM helps overcome the seized operation due to a bad bearing, allowing the water pump to supply coolant and bring the temperature back to normal. You may hear squealing noise from engine bay if water pump is not operating smoothly. To test a bad water pump, squeeze the upper radiator hose when engine is completely warmed up. Then rev the engine and check if you can feel any pressure building up in the hose. No pressure indicates that water pump is bad. Number five, clogged radiator. If the radiator is clogged with gunk or has some obstructions, the coolant will not flow through it smoothly. 
it will cause engine's temperature to rise. You can use infrared thermometer to check the temperature of the coolant entering and exiting the radiator. A significant temperature drop between the inlet and outlet can indicate a clogged radiator. Flushing a cooling system is needed if there is gunk in radiator or anywhere in cooling system. You can simply drain the coolant from radiator and fill it with distilled water. Then, run engine until it reaches its operating temperature, then drain and repeat until water runs clear. Another method is by using a garden hose. First remove thermostat from engine and install its housing back to allow continuous flow of coolant. Then disconnect lower radiator hose where it attaches to the engine block. Take garden hose and feed into radiator opening where lower hose was connected. This allows the water to circulate through all the coolant passages and jackets inside the engine block itself. The water will exit through the disconnected radiator hose. Number six, malfunctioning radiator fan and fan clutch. Radiator fan helps draw cool air through the radiator to aid in heat dissipation. If the fans aren't operating correctly or the fan clutch is faulty, it can lead to insufficient cooling and temperature fluctuations. The vehicles have either electrical or mechanical radiator fans. The mechanical radiator fans rely on clutch to turn on and off when fan clutch engages or disengages. In such cases, you should test fan clutch. First, start the engine when it's cold and with the hood open, observe the fan speed. If increasing the engine's RPM does not increase the fan speed, it means fan clutch is bad. Next, leave the engine idle and observe the fan's behavior when the engine is warming up. If the temperature continues to increase and there is no change in fan speed, it means clutch should be replaced. Now, when engine reaches above operating temperature, you can perform a newspaper test by insert a rolled up newspaper into the fan blades while the engine is running. If the fan stops, it means clutch is bad. For electric radiator fan, you should check related fuses and relays. Use a multimeter to check if power is reaching the fan connector or the fan control module. You can also test radiator fan by disconnecting the fan motor from the electrical system and then applying 12 volts directly to the fan motor terminals or connectors. If the fan spins, the motor is likely functional and the issue may be with the fan control module or wiring. Another way to test radiator fan is checking the continuity and resistance of the fan motor windings using multimeter. You should also inspect the fan control module and the ECU box for signs of water ingress or moisture damage, which can cause malfunctions. You should also verify that the ground connections for the fan and the control module are clean and secure. Number 7. Malfunctioning Engine Coolant Temperature Sensor A faulty temperature sensor or its damaged harness connector can cause the temperature gauge to provide incorrect readings, even if the engine's actual temperature is within normal range. The engine coolant temperature also sends input to the fan control module for regulating fan speed. A malfunctioning ECT sensor will send inconsistent readings to the fan module which will cause intermittent overheating issues. To test the engine coolant temperature sensor, immerse it in hot and cold water and measure its resistance at different temperatures using a multimeter. Compare the resistance values to the specifications in your service manual. Let me know in the comments if you've dealt with the problem of the car overheating for some time then goes back to normal. If you want to dive deeper, check the link down below in video description where I have linked a handy guide. Be sure to like and subscribe for more auto repair tips. Thanks for watching.